Coming up, the Community Services Board moves under city management. The relaunch of Schooner Virginia, Norfolk Police hook up city youth with the sporting chance. These and many more good news stories from across the Mermaid City on this edition of Norfolk News Now. Welcome to the August edition of Norfolk News Now. I'm Karen Parker Chesson with the Norfolk Police Department. Thanks for joining us. The start of a new fiscal year brings changes to city governments throughout the region, including right here in Norfolk. This year, there's a big change in how the city aids those with mental health issues and drug addiction. Triple N reporter John Linka explains the new way of doing business at the Community Services Board. Excellent. I Thank really you appreciate it. Norfolk City Manager Marcus Jones has shaken a hand or two in his career but never this many at one time. These hands he's shaking are connected to the bodies of employees of the Norfolk Community Services Board. The Norfolk Community Services Board was a quasi-independent organization assisting Norfolk residents with mental health, mental retardation, and substance abuse problems. On July 1st, with the turn of the new fiscal year, the Norfolk CSB officially transitioned to a department within the city of Norfolk. And it was interesting. I thought there would be some apprehension but there was a bit of excitement because once we started to look at the situation and once we started to see what the CSB could be like, once it was a part of the city and have all the, the assets and all the resources of a 5,000 person workforce, it became something that it was more when are we going to do it and not why are we going to do it. So what does that mean as far as differences you will see? Our goal was for there not to be that much of a difference. Um, you know, it's, it's run like a governmental organization anyway. There's some fine-tuning of the, of the structure of the way their board of directors operates. There's, of course, you know, fine-tuning of the way um, staff at the, um, the leadership level do their jobs. But the goal was is that the staff would still come in the, on the 2nd of July and to the same desk and their jobs would look the same. The consumers would show up for their appointments or receive services in the community. They would look the same they did on June 30th. That was our goal. We accomplished our goal and we're very proud of it. Proud enough to bring many of the employees of the CSB into this auditorium to simply say, Today, you're just a part of the family. You're the sisters and the brothers also. I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you to the family. With the transition to a city-run entity comes a new website. We have started the website mostly with information on how the transition worked because that seems to be the people's biggest question. We have a, an auto link that takes you straight back to our old website so if people are looking for specific services and things like that who we are, where we're located, how this transition worked anyway, and just an overview of the purpose of the Community Services Board. And some additional office space at the corner of Virginia Beach Boulevard and Monticello Avenue. Uh, North Community Services Board uh, court services for mental health court and drug court have been partnering with the uh, Department of Probation and Parole uh, since 1998 to provide combined case management, probation and parole services to help offenders uh, who are being seen by this uh, specialized court to recover and succeed in the community. We've been providing the service together for a long time. We historically had shared some office space, but for one reason or another, the office space was given up. The space became available again. We looked at this as a wonderful opportunity to bring our case managers to be in the building right next to the same building where the probation officers again, so they really can work together on an everyday basis to make sure that we are helping all of these folks uh, achieve what they're trying to achieve is to overcome their criminal charges um, and at the same time to stabilize their mental health and their substance abuse issues. Achievements here and achievements for the entire Community Services Board joining with the City of Norfolk. Each person got a handshake from the City Manager, a mermaid lapel pin, and a request. I want you to find joy in being a part of this team. Well, if you want good. joy, I got it. Good, good. I know that the CSP is going to be one of those departments where other localities across the state and across the country come here to benchmark us because we're doing it better than anybody else. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka. It's not just a shopping trip, it's an experience. Shoppers lined up for the chance to be among the first customers when Urban Outfitters opened their doors last month. 
Located on Granby Street, it is only the third Urban Outfitters store in Virginia. The store is in the former A.A. Adams building, which was originally built in 1910. This is a $2 million investment here. It's going to create at least 25 jobs and a number of other spin-off jobs. Urban Outfitters has over 170 stores across the United States and, and other uh, continents, including uh, Europe. We've been looking at spaces in Death on Norfolk for five plus years and uh, we found out about a year ago the store was opening and as soon as I found out I had managers all over my district asking to come and be a part of the store uh, just as far as knowing that the assignment that was going to be created in downtown is the only one within a two hour radius um, so we knew that we were going to be welcomed and everyone's going to love it just based on all the customers that drove to Richmond which is the nearest store um, so we constantly heard that in Richmond when were, when were we going to open in downtown Norfolk. The store's design team worked to enhance historic and architectural elements of the building. Crews preserved plaster and wallpaper and exposed other character rich elements like awning structure and wood joists. In addition to Urban Outfitters unique retail offerings opening day shoppers were treated to live music performances. It's no secret unemployment is a main concern in today's world. The city of Norfolk is doing its part to make sure residents have a shot at getting a steady job with the kind of skills that will also benefit their community. The Triple N's John Linka has the story. Lewis Wilson. A graduation in July? But school's been out for a while, right? Well, not this school. You see, this is the graduation of the 198th Building Trades Academy, an apprenticeship program with Tidewater Builders Association. There's an industry out there that's really hiring folks, and it's called the multifamily housing industry. The apartment complex owners are looking for trained people, qualified people, with skill sets that can help them turn an apartment, repair an apartment, and get it ready for the next tenant. These 34 students spent the last three months learning everything from plumbing to electricity to carpentry to heating and air conditioning. Montique Eli and Jessica Maldonado were two of 11 Norfolk residents sponsored at $4,000 a pop by the city of Norfolk as part of a workforce training grant called Neighbors Building Neighborhoods. In my own home, uh, I always had to fix everything by myself. You know, it's better for me if I know a lot of things. And um, the only thing is to get a better job. A better job, which is everyone's goal in an economy that is desperate for jobs. But it's not just about getting a job for these students. It's about getting these students the skills necessary to give back to their communities. That's something that we emphasize to the students during the course of the training is that you're giving something back to where you live and it's real, real important for people because they get a sense of pride, they get a sense of community, they're helping to reshape their, their own communities. They've spent the past 12 weeks doing classroom work and hands-on training. It's very important because it gives you a different point of view of what you're supposed to do, you know, as far as the right way to do it and the best way to do it, you know. It's different to uh, stay in classroom and only uh, read books and you know it's just different you learn a lot of experience. They even had an externship putting their skills to the test in what was basically a one-week job interview with companies in their specific fields throughout Hampton Roads. We have to replace, I mean to put um, this back, put the um, windows, blinds, and the doors cabinet. We put uh, the this this thing together. The bathrooms, we changed all this yesterday. The you no know, the toilet seat, yeah, the smoke alarm, yeah, the thermostat too. Helping, assisting with um, putting in countertops, drawers, taking up carpet, cleaning carpet, you know putting in vents and a vast amount of stuff. Jessica Maldonado. And on graduation day, Jessica and Montique knew that this graduation was a step in the right direction for them and for Norfolk. Monty Ely. Well opportunity, you know. You actually give back to your community and actually serve into the Norfolk city. To, it gives you a sense of community. And investment in, in, in your residents is an investment in your community. 
because it's those residents who live in your community who will take a much greater stance in maintaining the quality of life that they currently are, are having to enjoy. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka. For more information about how you can invest in a student, contact John Mack at the Building Trades Academy at 757-305-9060. The need for medical care is increasing all the time. Now, some students at Eastern Virginia Medical School are taking part in a win-win partnership with the residents of Norfolk. John Linka has the story. This is the only time that Caroline Dennis can get medical care. You see, she does not have medical insurance. We wouldn't have her in the web to go. But she does have this place the HOPES Clinic in Norfolk. HOPES stands for Health Outreach Partnership of Eastern Virginia Medical School students. On Wednesday and Thursday nights, Norfolk residents without health insurance come to the Norfolk Public Health Building for free medical exams and basic care. We provide them family care, uh, just general care if they have general complaints or if they have any prescriptions for chronic diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes, stuff like that, um, or if they have acute problems that they have they would like us to see. But no other clinic in the entire state of Virginia is like this one. It's a different kind of free clinic because our students run it completely. They do the follow-up, they call the patients to make sure that they understand their medications, and it's all done under the direction of an attending physician, and every patient is seen by an attending physician, but our students actually do a lot of the interaction. We bring them back, do all their blood, blood, vitals, blood pressure, heart rate, um, and all that kind of stuff. We take their history, do a physical exam, and then uh, we kind of come up with a diagno diagnosis and treatment plan. Then we go and uh, present it to the attending, and then we, kinda, then they, we all go in together. It's so important in medical education now when we have so much um, electronic technology to make sure that our, our students are seeing patients as people so that they're the person doctor interacting with the person patient so it's person to person interaction and there's no other venue that's as good at giving that kind of experience as here at a free clinic. When you think of a medical student who typically goes to school is in class all day long it is a very stringent educational process and they're often studying for eight hours a day in addition to being in class and on top of that, they're doing this, and they're making the phone calls late at night, and they're following up on things on the weekend. I think that it's been a very pleasant surprise to see just what it's done for them, and then how um, they have interacted in such a positive way with the patients. It makes you feel great that you can give back to the community. You learn something, you're learning, but you also get to give back and all that kind of stuff, so it's pretty cool, yeah. Cool for the students, and even cooler for folks like Carolyn. That's very great for us. Very, very great. I like all of them. To learn more about the Hopes Clinic or to make an appointment, call 757-446-0333. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka. Summertime means baseball, and there's a great new great place for Norfolk's boys and girls of summer to practice. This is the new indoor batting cage at the Brambleton Community Outreach Center. The batting cage is a result of a partnership between the City of Norfolk's Department of Recreation, Parks and Open Space, the Norfolk Police Department, and Norfolk State University. It's tied into the Badges for Baseball program, a 12-week summer program sponsored by Norfolk Police and the Parks and Rec Department. It gives police officers the opportunity to mentor children in Norfolk. I think the Badges for Baseball pulls it all together. It's just beautiful seeing the sea of blue behind you as we're starting to integrate um, public safety, not as a reaction to something, but we're being on the, the front end. Bringing police and children together for the good of all. This actually gives a chance for officers to work with our youth, and it removes the stigmatism where a lot of kids actually think that police officers are bad or police officers re represent something that's negative. That's not true. We want to make sure that they see police officers as friends, as mentors, is somebody that can go to in time of need, and this is a great program for us. Now these kids, like my age, are doing stuff that they're not supposed to be doing, smoking and stuff. So th having this here at this rec center in the type of area that it's in now, helps get kids from out there on the streets and bringing them inside, practicing, be able to learn how to play different sports and enjoy what they do. 
Right now, the batting cage is set up in the middle of the basketball court, but it can be retracted and reopened in just a couple of minutes. The cage's location gives kids the added benefit of getting a sneak peek into college life. I am very excited that we have taken the initiative to try to develop this program to help our youth not only to understand the game of baseball, but to create some very constructive activities for them so that they will get the opportunity to actually be on a college campus and see what it's like. For more information, contact the Brambleton Community Outreach Center at 823-8743. One of the best places to work in the area is right here in Norfolk. The Norfolk Sheriff's Office was named one of the best places worked, named best large company, and received the honor as best overall in this year's Hampton Roads Business Journal's best places to work each year. The journal impanels a group of independent judges to choose the best employers. They base their decisions on various criteria, including diversity, benefits, and perks. In addition to the normal city benefits, Sheriff's Office employees have access to free tides, baseball tickets and on-site gym employee cookouts and an extra day off above their usual paid leave. Sheriff Bob McCabe was thrilled with the honor and is pretty sure the homemade cookies he delivers to his deputies working Christmas morning is probably what put his office over the top. When we come back, some new additions to your Virginia Zoo, plus some big changes at the Chrysler Museum, and a new role for a familiar ship. We'll tell you all about the latest role for the schooner Virginia. Every year, thousands of pets at Norfolk's largest animal shelter are looking for a new home. Visit the Norfolk Animal Care and Adoption Center today. Somebody in here is waiting for somebody out there. Be there somebody. Welcome back to the Triple N. Summertime is the perfect time to check out all the animals at the Virginia Zoo. You'll see plenty of old friends and some new additions too. Our man, John Linka, introduces us to some of Norfolk's newest residents. These are African mammals. They're small mammals that live. They're pretty widely distributed throughout Africa, mostly Eastern Africa. The African rock hyrax sit in, well, rocks, both in Africa and here at the Virginia Zoo. These four portly adults camouflage themselves in the rocks, not looking very agile or athletic. That is, until it's time to go to the doctor. A gremlin? Yes, they try to avoid doctor's checkups just like we do. Hey, sweetheart. Being held in a fiberglass case for everyone's protection, including theirs, they're checked for a microchip. You're so mad, I know, you're fine. And checked to see who is who, or who is what. This looks like one of the younger females. Then it's on to every female's favorite, the scale. 7.9. She's about as excited as every other woman on a scale. Ranging between one and two feet long and five to nine pounds, their ancestors actually gave rise to elephants and manatees. They're not endangered or threatened in the wild at all. Their populations do pretty well. Um, they're herbivorous, like I mentioned, they eat plant matter in the wild and live in large family groups. Speaking of large family groups, there are some new additions to the Virginia Zoo's Hyrax family. This little yipper is one of three new babies born last month. Hey, oh my goodness gracious! But don't be fooled by the cute furry face. Yeah, so they have pretty unique dentition. Oh goodness! Yeah, they have um, these two little front incisors that sort of act as modified tusks and they're sort of a defense. They bite. Like their parents before them, the two females and one male baby got microchipped. I know, I know, I'm sorry and weighed. 280 grams. Look at that little face. While their faces mean a lot to us, their feet mean a lot to them. Their feet act sort of like suction cups and they bounce. They're really cool. And their little front feet, look how, look how cute. <laughs> They're fantastic. Aren't you? For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Lenka. For more information on everything that the Virginia Zoo has to offer, just log on to virginiazoo.org. 
When you're renovating a home for elephants, you can bet it's going to be a big job. Crews are working this summer to make some improvements and enlargements to the elephant habitat at the Virginia Zoo. Steel I-beams will replace existing wood posts. As you might expect, the steel beams are stronger and more durable than the wood. Those stronger beams mean keepers will be able to allow the elephants to stay in their habitats overnight, which means more exercise and more time on natural, not man-made surfaces. The project will ultimately expand the holding yard adjacent to the exhibit from 3,600 square feet to about 4,400 square feet. That means more space for the zoo's two current elephants and allows for the possibility of adding a third to the herd in the future. Local contractor Auxiliary Systems, Inc. is doing the work at the zoo. Zookeepers expect the elephants to remain on exhibit while the work is being done. Norfolk is home to the largest art museum in Hampton Roads. Well, now the museum is about to grow even larger to house its tremendous collection. Here's John Linka with details. If you've been by the Chrysler in the last couple of weeks, you'll notice uh, quite a number of bits of construction fence going out around the front of the building, and that's the, the first step in a very major expansion and renovation. That $24 million expansion and renovation of the Chrysler Museum is complex, but the reasoning behind it is simple. We have uh, over 30,000 objects in our collection here. The problem is we're out of gallery space. We haven't got the space to show them. So we're going to be creating three very nice new spaces, new galleries, about uh, 8,500 square feet of brand new gallery space uh, to let us get more of the collection that's in storage now out and on view. And make them easier to see and understand, especially the Chrysler's glass collection. As we're going through, our starting point has been the questions that visitors ask us about the objects on display. So there'll be less glass on display, it'll be grouped so it really does tell a story, and we'll be telling people the things about the glass that they want to know so they can understand how really nifty it is. And it's ancient world galleries, including a section that is currently buried so deep within the museum, many folks don't even know it exists. In order to find this gallery, you really need to activate your GPS. It's the only way you'll find your way back here. But when you get here, what a treasure trove. A couple of thousands of objects, all of which help you explore the worlds of the Aztecs and the Mayas, and to a slightly lesser degree, the, the Incas uh, of South America. Um, great ceramics, great stonework, fabulous things that are done in beads and feathers. It's a wonderful window into this extraordinary world that existed here before Europeans arrived. This, this will be one of the first rooms you encounter in this ancient world section and you'll be able to move easily and sequentially from one civilization to the other without running into a dead end. In addition to the ancient worlds and glass galleries, first floor renovations include a new cafe and catering kitchen, a relocated elevator, as well as a new and improved front to the museum, making the entrance more handicap accessible. Second floor renovations include new galleries for American and European paintings and bigger spaces for contemporary art. Heating and air conditioning will also be renovated to better preserve the collections and reduce the museum's energy costs. The renovations will cause the Chrysler Museum to close for about 14 months beginning in January of 2013. Even though you won't be able to get in the museum to see the artifacts, the artifacts are coming to you. We'll have uh, a storefront in uh, MacArthur Center uh, that'll be open seven days a week. Uh, we're rethinking our two historic houses downtown. The uh, Willoughby Baylor House uh, will be installed as a kind of mini museum of our American holdings. Uh, we're doing partnerships with the Gordon Gallery up at Old Dominion University and with the Contemporary Arts Center down in Virginia Beach. People can find the Chrysler all over the place. The estimated project completion date is early 2014. I think people are going to discover that uh, their museum looks a lot like it always has, but when they come inside, they're going to discover that there's more space and that that space is better arranged and they can move more easily through the building and that the art looks more interesting than it ever has before. For more information on the museum, just log on to www.chrysler.org. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka.
Friends of Norfolk's historic cemeteries have recently finished restoring the tomb of Father William H. Lewis. Father Lewis was the founder of St. Paul CME Church. The church recently celebrated 157 years in Norfolk. When Father Lewis died in 1882, he was interred in a tomb that is the only one of its kind in Calvary Cemetery. The beehive design allowed families to maximize available burial space on their lots. A similar tomb in Cedar Grove Cemetery was found to contain the remains of 19 individuals when it was restored several years years ago. The Friends of Norfolk's Historic Cemeteries took on the restoration to preserve it for future generations to appreciate. The nonprofit organization strives to restore and preserve artifacts of cultural heritage within Norfolk's Historic Cemeteries. Norfolk youth are trying to raise money to build a chess center, and they need your help. Children from Lambert's Point, Ocean View, and Park Place all ask Governor Bob McDonald to give the state a day to play nice. NICE stands for the Norfolk Initiative for Chess Excellence. Even Norfolk Police developed a chess outreach initiative towards youth in 2009. Well, the governor read their letters and recently signed a proclamation creating Chess and Education Day. For the state to support the value of chess in improving critical thinking and better test scores. Now the kids are hoping to raise money to turn a 1920s trolley train station in the Villa Heights neighborhood into the Train of Thought Chess Center. The center is intended to be a place where at-risk youth and residents can learn how to play chess and have computer access. I think that it's vital to getting kids into a position where we can complement what our school systems are trying to do. Um, it's something that no other city and no other state is really exploring, and it's a way of making this kind of learning really fun. The estimated cost of the center is about $100,000, with the goal of opening in the fall. With a few short weeks to go before school starts in the fall, summer camps are in full swing throughout Norfolk. There is one brand new camp that features a blast from the past and a look to the future. The Schooner Virginia has returned to active duty as part of the new summer camp for kids called Elizabeth River Adventures. The week-long camps are held in partnership with Nauticus and give kids aged 8 to 12 the chance to hop on the Schooner Virginia, a replica 1917 wooden pilot boat. For the Schooner Virginia is part, we're teaching a of course, the history of these amazing wooden pilot vessels and their purpose of what they did on the Elizabeth River through time and how they've given to us over the past and, and how they play a role today. As part of the camp, the kids also learn about wetlands on the Learning Barge, the world's first floating classroom. The camps center around Elizabeth River themes with the ultimate mission being teaching the kids what it will take to make the Elizabeth River swimmable and fishable by 2020. The Schooner Virginia will also play a major role in Sail Nauticus, a community sailing center scheduled to break ground in 2013. For more information about the weekly camps, visit elizabethriver.org. Nauticus has partnered with Horizons Hampton Roads to help combat the dreaded summer brain drain. Every Tuesday, Nauticus education manager Abby Dodson conducts a class on maritime photography for about 30 middle schoolers in the Horizons program. At the end of the six-week program, the kids' best photos will be featured as a special exhibit in the Nauticus Wonder Hall. Horizons Hampton Roads offers their summer enrichment program to more than 300 low-income public school children in kindergarten through eight. If you carry a reusable water bottle, you can stop by any of 19 shops and eateries around the city to get a free refill, even if you're not shopping or eating there. The establishments have joined with Tap It. Tap It aims to reduce reliance on bottled water by hooking up with folks with cafes and restaurants who are willing to fill up reusable bottles with tap water for free. To find out where you can get your free refill, go to tapitwater.com. You can also download a free app for your smartphone to find your free refill when you are on the go. Well, that wraps up the August edition of Norfolk News Now on the Triple N. Thanks for watching Norfolk's Neighborhood Network. For all things Norfolk, I'm Karen Parker Chesson with the Norfolk Police Department. Take care of yourself and your city and celebrate life daily.